What is numerical aperture and microscopy? Well, the simplest way to understand it is it's just the angle of light that is coming into or going out of something. The most common place you'll see a numerical aperture number is on a microscope objective. So that'd be this 0.1 number right there or on a microscope condenser, which is 1.25 on this one. A general trend that you're gonna find is the higher in magnification that your objective goes, the numerical aperture also correspondingly gets larger and larger. A common misconception is that the numerical aperture dictates what the final magnification is, hence why you see those two numbers getting bigger, usually at the same time. But this isn't the case. In fact, numerical aperture simply dictates what the final resolution of the image is. But you can actually add an arbitrary amount of magnification to whatever microscope objective that you want to, hence why you can swap out microscope eyepieces, um, typically like a 10 times for a 25 times. I mean, if you really wanted to, you can add extra lenses onto the system and blow up the image to be the size of the Empire State Building. But if you did blow this up to the size of the Empire State Building, you look really closely at it, you're not necessarily gonna see any more detail in the image than you would if you were just looking into this just with your own eyes. One way to think about it is if you had a 4K TV and it was, let's say, this big versus a 4K TV that was this big, both TVs, if you go up and look at them closely, you're going to be able to see the same amount of detail when you look at the image. It's just that on the bigger TV, that same size was just blown up and maybe the individual pixel size is much larger. When you look at it closely, you can see the individual pixels. If you wanted to see more detail out of that really big TV, you'd have to upgrade the resolution to an 8K display. And it's the exact same thing with magnification and numerical aperture. Magnification is how big the TV is and numerical aperture is what the resolution of the TV is. So why wouldn't you just choose to always have a higher resolution? Why wouldn't you just choose to have a higher numerical aperture? Well, in the same way that putting 4K on a phone screen is kind of silly because you can't, you're not gonna be able to see any more detail on a 4K phone screen than you can just a 1080p phone screen. Um, putting, putting a really high numerical aperture on a low magnification objective doesn't really net you any benefits. And there are some practical challenges that come up when you scale to these higher numerical apertures. For example, at high numerical apertures, the bottom of the microscope objective is basically completely touching the sample, and it has to be like this. And at the extreme end of the high numerical apertures, you have to start using immersion oil, which you put a drop of between the top of the cover slip and the bottom of the microscope objective, which essentially matches the refractive indices of the pieces of glass to each other. So why does a microscope objective have to get so close to the sample at high numerical apertures? Well, at the end of the day, it's just geometry. If you look at this little visualization here, pretty clearly describes what's going on. By the way, shout out, this is Microscopy U's website. This is a deep dive article on numerical aperture. And if you wanna check out any deep dive on anything, totally recommend them. Really awesome resource. Numerical aperture also dictates the depth of field of the sample that you're looking at. And by depth of field, I mean how much of the Z direction, the up and down direction, is in focus at any given time, how big that slice is. And again, it just comes down to the geometry and the angles of it. And in case you're curious, here is the equation for numerical aperture. So it's the refractive index of the material times basically the angle of the light that's coming in. And so that's going back to the oil immersion fluid. This is changing the, the refractive index portion of this equation. So both the objective and the condensers say what their numerical apertures are, but why? Why is it important what the condenser's numerical aperture is? Well, thing to understand is that on an objective, this numerical aperture is fixed. It's always gonna be 0.65. But on a condenser, it is going to actually be adjustable and you can change it. So I have this condenser here. You can see on the back side, there is an iris that you can open up or close. So this number, this 1.25, is the largest possible numerical aperture that these condensers can get to. So if you want, you can artificially limit what the numerical apertures of these are by closing down the iris, but you can never exceed that uh, 1.25 number. And the reason why you can adjust bright field condensers are because you typically want to match the numerical aperture of the condenser to the objective. If you were to, let's say, you know, this is a pretty relatively high numerical aperture objective. If you were to say, illuminate it like that, you would actually be not achieving the full resolution that this objective can get because the numerical aperture of the system is both the angle of the light that's illuminating the sample, but then also the angle of the light that's entering into the objective, which is collecting that image 
and then later presenting it to your eyes. Conversely, the reason that you don't just always have the microscope uh, uh, condenser all the way open is that you end up uh, essentially reducing the contrast in the final image. It starts to wash things out if it's too high of a too high of a numerical aperture for the for the objective, and you don't again you don't really like achieve any additional benefits. Usually, um, this does basically changing a condenser will change the the total contrast of the image. So sometimes it actually is beneficial to be illuminating your sample with a lower numerical aperture than what your objective can actually can actually handle. If you're looking to buy a microscope, check out our Horizons microscope. We designed it to be a universal microscope that works with as many samples as possible in one single package. And we give you all the tools, the training, and supplies that you need to go from microscope zero to microscope hero. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.